Yes. Can you hear me loud and clearly? Okay. Good night, everybody. Welcome to the discussion in the Forum of European Culture, Act for Democracy, about the state of Spanish democracy in relation with contemporary art and the Catalan independence movement. My name is Stephen Adolf. I'm a more or less former correspondent for various Dutch media in, in Spain and also written a book about Spain, so I know something about the country and what's going on. Um, I will help to moderate this evening um, and um, let's hope that everything will go smoothly. This is a special night, of course, for democratic Spain in particular. Since just today, it became clear that the government of Prime Minister Rajoy will be voted out tomorrow. So, now, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be neutral, so I won't applaud, but you could say that this at least is a sign that some parts of the democracy in Spain is at least working. Okay, special welcome to our Spanish guests, Santiago Sierra, Cesar Strawberry, Chel Bonnet, Pablo Mayoral and Begonia Lalana. They're sitting here, but they will come on here on the stage to do their presentations. Uh, this program is part of the second edition of the Forum on European Culture. This year's theme is Act for Democracy. We just opened the forum in the Stads Schouwburg with, uh, among others, a speech of Santiago um, Sierra. And we'll continue this whole manifestation until Sunday evening. In four days, artists, thinkers, journalists and politicians from all over the world are together here in Amsterdam to discuss Europe challenges and think about Europe's future at this crucial point in European history. The Forum is an initiative of the Bali, that's the place where you're here, and Dutch culture. Um, tonight, we will focus on one of the most crucial regions in, in Europe, Spain, and look at recent developments in that country. The question is, what is the state of democracy and freedom of speech in Spain? And um, is the situation in Spain a development that Europe should take very seriously? The main reason for organizing this program was an incident earlier this year, last February. Uh, the most recent work of artist Santiago Sierra was censored and removed from Spain leading international art fair Arco in Madrid. The work consisted of 24 pixeled mugshots of political prisoners. At least, that was the title of the work. And three of them are at the moment still jailed as um, being Catalan separatist leaders. It is the first time that Sierra has been censored as an artist. The question is, of course, is this a one-off occurrence or is it a sign of something bigger? Do we really have to speak about political prisoners in Spain? Or do we have to talk about imprisoned politicians, which is something quite different? That is what we are going to explore tonight with uh, Santiago Sierra himself, of course, and some guests that he brought, uh, I just mentioned them, along with him from Spain. Of course, there will be time after um, their presentations to, and, and, and our questioning um, to ask your question, so uh, feel free to do so. That will be at the end of each block. So there are two blocks and you can ask your uh, questions then. Um, okay, well the first part of the evening um, will be about the freedom of expression and contemporary arts. It will be followed um, by um, um, another theme, which is more about the, the freedom of expression and the state of democracy in Spain itself. Okay, 
this is more or less the program. And then I would ask um, Santiago Sierra as the first one to take the floor. Um, Santiago Sierra is a, is a famous Spanish artist whose uh, performative work uh, is addressing inequality in contemporary society and often caused controversy, to say the least. Whether casting sculptures from human excrements or paying junkie um, prostitutes to have a lined tattoo on their backs, Shera is a provocateur whose art raises headlines. Did I introduce you good? good? Well, in this way? Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> okay, Santiago, the floor is yours. Okay. And you want to do it standing or sitting? Yes. Standing. Yes. Uh, I'm going to, <clears throat> uh, to read my presentation in Spanish. Sorry, but you will get the, the translation. Uh, afterwards, I can answer your question in English if you wish. <clears throat> um, hemos venido a contarles que existen presos políticos en la España de hoy. Nadie ha logrado convencerme de lo contrario. Eh, nadie ha conseguido rebatirme esta afirmación. A pesar de los intentos de desacreditar mi obra, de esconderla, lo único que han conseguido es hacer de caja de resonancia. Porque de acuerdo con los criterios establecidos por la Asamblea Parlamentaria del Consejo de Europa, en España existen personas que han, sido, que han visto conculcadas sus libertades de pensamiento, expresión o asociación, o que han sido detenidas o represaliadas por razones puramente políticas. Durante un tiempo, o unas condiciones claramente desproporcionadas con respecto al delito que hubiesen cometido, o discriminatorias en comparación con otras personas. Existirán siempre los presos políticos mientras haya discriminación, violencia institucional y abuso de poder. Existirán los presos políticos mientras existan luchadoras empeñadas en cuestionar el orden dominante. La existencia de presos políticos es inherente a la existencia de los estados. En la España moderna, esta realidad compleja y atormentada, no han faltado nunca los presos políticos. España es el único país de Europa que ha vivido sometido durante 40 años a una dictadura militar fascista. El único que no ha ajustado cuentas con su pasado y que mantiene todavía los símbolos e instituciones de aquel régimen genocida. Los torturadores del franquismo gozan todavía de impunidad y privilegios, mientras sus víctimas han cumplido largas condenas o yacen olvidadas en fosas comunes. El Estado español es el sueño de una élite política y financiera centralista que nunca ha logrado encajar sus piezas. Los deseos de autodeterminación de sus pueblos han sido la pesadilla de una herencia nacional católica que quiso dejarlo todo atado y bien atado. Esto ha producido mucho dolor y un conflicto cuya naturaleza política nunca ha terminado de reconocerse. Pero ha sido también la justificación para desatar la represión contra toda forma de asociacionismo y contra toda reivindicación independentista bajo el pretexto de que todo es terrorismo o forma parte de su entorno. Así, no solo las armas, sino también el ejercicio del derecho a voto se considera delito de rebelión como ha ocurrido durante la convocatoria del referéndum de autodeterminación en Cataluña, que ha llevado a representantes electos a prisión o al exilio, precisamente por intentar sacar adelante su programa. El activismo anarquista es otro de los fantasmas contra los que se han desatado a menudo los montajes represivos en España. Decenas de militantes han sido detenidos en los últimos años 
durante sucesivas operaciones en busca de una supuesta organización armada anarquista que nunca existió, como ha demostrado recientemente el archivo de tales denuncias. En el delirio paranoico del poder llegaron a presentarse como pruebas de cargo grafitis callejeros y tweets invocando a personajes de manga, como Goku vive, la lucha sigue. La aprobación de la Ley de Seguridad Ciudadana, conocida significativamente como Ley Mordaza, ha ampliado enormemente los supuestos de delito, multiplicando exponencialmente las denuncias y sanciones por resistencia a la autoridad. Raperos, artistas, titiriteros, tuiteros o humoristas han sido denunciados a menudo y a menudo encarcelados desde su aplicación por ejercer su irrenunciable libertad de expresión. Bajo este clima represivo, al final todos somos presos políticos, pues todos vivimos recluidos en un sistema jerárquico, segregador y violento, temerosos de contravenir con nuestras opiniones su paz artificial. Están también los que han sufrido denuncias y represalias por estos motivos. Solo en el ámbito de las artes plásticas me viene a la memoria el caso de Eugenio Merino, denunciado por la fundación dedicada al dictador Francisco Franco, por una obra presentada también en Arco, Feria de Arte Internacional de Madrid. O el caso del colectivo Democracia, al que se le reclamaban 600.000 euros por unas fotografías artísticas absolutamente neutrales, protagonizadas por policías. En España, los creadores viven hoy en un estado de excepción. El Estado ha lanzado un pulso contra ellos y no cabe retroceder. Debemos seguir ejerciendo nuestros derechos con más fuerza y osadía que nunca, dentro o más allá de nuestras fronteras, hasta reducir al absurdo esta campaña de intimidación. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> Santiago Serra. Um, the next speaker, please come on the stage. Cesar Strawberry. Uh, Cesar is a Spanish artist and musician, and he's known for being the leader of the popular rap and rock band Def Con Dos. Todavía, ¿no? Sí. Yeah. A band that blends uh, different genres and does not shy away from controversial topics. In January 2017, it was, I think, Cesar Strawberry was sentenced to a year in jail by the Spanish Supreme Court for remarked, uh, several remarks on Twitter uh, that were deemed as pro-terrorism made on Twitter between 2013 and 2014. Cesar. Thank you. <coughs> Spanish singer. <laughs> Buenas noches. Eh, quiero agradecer al Foro Europeo de la Cultura y a Santiago Sierra la oportunidad que me dan hoy de exponer la lamentable situación que está sufriendo mi país en materia de derechos humanos. Desde hace cuatro años España padece un recorte de libertades fundamentales que bajo ningún concepto debería consentirse en el marco de la Unión Europea. Los españoles y españolas estamos sufriendo la ofensiva perfectamente planificada por las más altas instancias políticas en connivencia con un poder judicial en muchos casos marioneta del gobierno que dentro del paisaje de corrupción institucional más lamentable de Europa ha desdibujado la separación de poderes hasta convertir los más altos tribunales del país en un arma política que recorta ilegalmente las libertades y derechos básicos que en su día fueron consagrados a través de tratados internacionales firmados con la ONU y con la Unión Europea, dando lugar a un panorama represivo aberrante que ignora deliberadamente el marco jurídico común europeo al que España, sin embargo, debe obligada obediencia. 
Ignorando, insisto, la legislación común europea, así como las reiteradas condenas del Tribunal de Derechos Humanos de Estrasburgo por su constante incumplimiento, España persevera de un modo autocrático y arrogante en una deriva represiva paranoide en la que, bajo el abanico de una nueva Inquisición, llamémosla 2.0, amparada por tres leyes locales, Ley de Enaltecimiento, Pacto Antiyihadista y Ley de Seguridad Ciudadana, cuestionadas ya incluso por la ONU, se están llevando a cabo persecuciones ideológicas, utilizando la prisión preventiva como arma política para castigar y tratar como terroristas de modo ejemplarizante a raperos, cantantes, tuiteros, activistas políticos y activistas políticos a quienes la ley europea, por el contrario, ni tan siquiera enjuiciaría por la vía civil. Raperos como Baltonic, Pablo Hassel o el colectivo La Insurgencia van a ser encarcelados como si de terroristas se tratase, para cumplir penas de privación de libertad que oscilan entre los dos y los cinco años. Y todo ello por hacer canciones. Sí, amigos, han oído bien, canciones. Tuiteros en la cárcel por bailar con un muñeco de cartón como Alfredo Ramírez. O como en mi propio caso, condenado a un año de prisión por escribir en Twitter que le regalaría al rey de España por su cumpleaños un bizcocho bomba. Sí, amigos, un bizcocho bomba, un año de cárcel. Se criminaliza la ironía, la sátira, el sarcasmo. Se secuestran libros, se prohíben canciones y se censuran exposiciones artísticas y no miro a nadie. Se condena por terrorismo, por terrorismo, a tuiteros y raperos, algo hasta ahora reservado solo al ámbito de las dictaduras y teocracias de lejanos hemisferios. Pero eso está pasando hoy en España, un país socio de pleno derecho de la Unión Europea en el que a lo mejor muchos de ustedes veranean. Un país que ha recibido ingentes fondos de cohesión para el desarrollo de sus infraestructuras y su economía, que han acabado en muchos casos en los bolsillos de sus corruptos dirigentes, los mismos que hoy ostentan el gobierno. Un país orgulloso de ser Europa para disponer de una moneda fuerte, sí, pero que desprecia, en cambio, los derechos humanos más elementales y las leyes compartidas que los protegen, a las que, sin embargo, debe obligado acato y obediencia. La España del Partido Popular ha permeabilizado ideológicamente las más altas instancias de la justicia para esconder su propia corrupción, tratando de hacer pasar por terroristas a humoristas, titireteros, cantantes, tuiteros y activistas políticos. Al amparo de esa doctrina del shock, también descrita por Naomi Klein, y de un deliberado e ilegal uso extensivo del llamado derecho penal del enemigo, el poder político y judicial español, en perfecta sincronía, desarrollan una ofensiva de censura y de caza de brujas que persigue penalmente cualquier forma de disidencia con un régimen que se niega a desprenderse de sus lazos con el franquismo más rancio. Lo que hoy está pasando en mi país, mañana podría llegar a pasar en el tuyo. Impidámoslo. Muchísimas gracias. Yeah, to start with, afterwards you can ask your questions. First, I want to have the privilege to have my own questions, and then we go ahead. Um, Santiago Sierra, when, when you started this idea of your, uh, your artwork, did you already sense in a way that some trouble would be ahead? Of course, of course. <clears throat> Since the beginning, no, it was very clear, but it's, you have to do what you have to, no? So in that case, I was scared because the situation was uh, very close and around me. Um, we start like uh, one year before of the, of the first show. 
Um, at the beginning when we start, uh, I was worried because some friends of mine, very close, like Eugenio Merino, had a serious problem with the Francisco Franco Foundation, with this uh, foundation created to promote the, the legacy of the dictator and, and to promote the, the um, uh, to teach the new generations about how wonderful it is to, to be a genocide. And this foundation was prosecuting my friend Eugenio Merino because he did some, some jokes, some sculptoric jokes with the face of Franco. No? I have one at home, by the way. <laughs> um, then a group of friends of mine, Democracia, well, is what I explained to you before, uh, they receive a, 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 a penalty for 600,000 600, euros. Finally, the, the court doesn't accept this, this, this penalty, but uh, as you can imagine, it's one year of suffering because you don't know what's going to happen with your life. Is you know. have to pay. How, how did it end with the Francisco Franco claim? Did they? No, they were not success either. They were not, not a success either. Then we made a show together in Vallecas, a group of people to condemn the figure of Franco. I imagine that in any other country, if you are in Germany, this kind of shows will be done in a big museum. We did it in, in a small place in, in Vallecas. And we received the visit of these people. The visit with bodyguards of the fun, uh, Fundación Francisco Franco, because they want to enter at the show, to know who, who were showing and what, and to put demands against all of us. So we didn't let them in, so uh, they couldn't. No? But they yeah, feel perhaps like they you could explain. I'm, I'm not sure. Probably all of you know that there is some, a thing like the uh, Fundación Francisco Franco. Or any people who don't know. Ah, it's it's like, like the Adolf Hitler Foundation, let's say, but it doesn't exist, of course. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, you can save taxes. You can save taxes by giving them some money. So it's, it's amazing, no? But you, uh, you have to understand that Spain is a very weird country because we still didn't, didn't have, uh, well, when I go outside and I see these museums of, of memory in Argentina or in Moscow or in, in Israel or many other places, I really envy, you know, the situation because these people, the Republican memory, doesn't exist, the people who was killed in the, in around, around the, the, the roads of, of all Spain are still there, nobody pick them out and give them a, a honor or give them some recognizement. No, no, we have the, the king of Spain, which is, the, 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 which is an imposition of, of the Franco. In Spain, we throw away the monarchy twice and they came back twice with guns. Um, this is the situation. No, even if, even when we have a, a, a government that says that is, that is uh, left, was not left. No, was a fake left to make the people believe that we are progressing. Or I don't know. Mm, this is the situation in Spain. It's very okay. scary. No, and now okay. we are facing it. We leave just the, the fake left or the real left out of it. But what I like to know is why did you choose the term political prisoner? Because some say, um, some of your critics say, that these guys who are in jail at the moment, they are facing jail time not <coughs> because of their beliefs, but because of their actions. So, For it, example? For example, the three Catalan uh, people who are now still in jail, the uh, politicians. So they say, actually, you can speak more of uh, politicians in jail, but not jailed politicians. Well, I never thought I will, I, uh, politicians will be on my piece. At the beginning, when I start this piece, uh, the, the victims, let's say, used to be activists. People, for example, from the from the trade, from the from the, um, the countryside, uh, workers from Andalusia, for example, uh, anarchist movement, or a lot of Basque country uh, people. And suddenly this thing happened no, in, the, in, in Catalonia and, um, and we had to include politicians. So I, I used to hate politicians, but in that case, what can you do? Hate. For the coherence with my, my word, I have to include them. No? Um, and I don't think they are in prison because what they did, uh, because I think it's because what they think. No? It's clear that you can, if you have a situation like a divorce, you cannot just don't talk with your with your wife and, and send them somebody to, to 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 punch her, no? So <laughs> uh, it's not reasonable. No? Okay, we, we will come back on that theme later, of course. Um, what what was the official reason to to censor your work on the on the article? 
the arc of, uh, because maybe disturb the normal <laughs> development of the arc no? and can be very protagonist and can I don't know. I think that the real thing is because the king of Spain was visiting the place and nobody wants this kind of photograph. No? My piece was in a very important wall because the El Galvear is an important gallery and she have the, they're both in, uh, her both in the entrance of the art fair in a very big place. So it was impossible not to have the photo. No? I think he didn't visit it either after your work was uh, he didn't after. removed. So so he so. had to enter for a back door. So the problem is, I don't know what is uh, he doing in this art fair because he is not a collector, he doesn't support art, he's just there for the photographs and he's disturbing our activity. No? But, but I think the official reason was that they thought that uh, it might uh, diverge the attention from the real reason, namely art. Yeah, yes, decoration, decoration, <laughs> this is the plan, no? Okay. So well, we want not... decoration. Yeah, your art is not, not, not decoration. No, not at all. Okay, so finally, um, this happened. Uh, how did the art world actually react? And not only the art world, uh, let's say, how were the reactions in general on this, this censorship? Because it was well, quite a row, no? It, it was, was a mysterious a lack of reaction, no? Mysterious lack of reaction? Mm, no, it was not, a, for example, the art fair, mm, galleries, store artists doesn't make any communicate or doesn't pronounce themselves as a group or people affected, no? The they group. probably consider that this is a personal, uh, personal fight between personalities and if you are lucky, you are lucky, and if you are unlucky, it's your... But I didn't show a response and this is dangerous because if you don't respond as a group, uh, you are sending the message that you don't care that they can destroy one of your people and, and it's not a problem. Okay, that, that's, that's the art, art world perhaps, but in general I think that there was quite some discussion about the fact that all the yeah, newspaper well they, wrote about it, it was a theme on television, and there was quite some discussion about it, no? No, no, what I have seen with this piece, I haven't seen any time in my life with any other piece. So for example, we have a spontaneous shows of people who decided to show them, to show it in a, in a, in, in, in a shop in the street or in a, on, on in a storage in their, in their own houses. We also have a copy done by the, by the, the, the Garage, the Ediciones El Garage. And this copy is, is, is all the time on, on show. And also the originals. The original have been in three different, different places. In one of them, uh, the people was uh, in front of my piece saying libertad presos políticos, libertad presos políticos, a, a crowd of people. I have never seen something like that. So I think that at the end, uh, it was a huge part of the society in Spain who was demanding this, this kind of symbol. No? of dignity for the people who suffer in the consequences of this disaster. But, but didn't you think that in the end, after a lot of discussion in newspapers, the whole thing more or less uh, revolved against the ARCO because everybody said this is absolutely ridiculous and it should never happen again? Yeah. But, not, uh, but I think it was more a response of the society more than specifically from the ARCO. From the art scene. So in society, the effects were actually yeah. more... Uh, in your favor and against this decision than, than, than in the art world itself. Yeah. Well, okay. for sure, there is another group who says that I'm supporting terrorists, I'm a friend of terrorists, blah, blah, blah. So. Yeah. Can I ask one question? By exception, okay. Because you said that there was a lot of articles in the, in the media. Yeah. And my question is, what was the... Uh, what were the art articles like in the Spanish media? What uh, did I'm they talking say? about Spanish media. Oh, it, really? it was covered, yeah, there was a broad uh, attention to this whole affair. And in general, the, the, the most of the critics were in favor of uh, Santiago Serra's work, at least that it could be expressed freely. And uh, most of the people, uh, most of the comments said that Arco had made a completely ridiculous decision and made fools of the, out of themselves. So in the end, uh, I think there was an attempt to get your work back at Arco, but you didn't. No, we tried several times, but uh, there was no way. In, they said something in public, and, but another thing. In, okay, in, in the private. end it didn't work out, but in, in general, uh, there was quite a negative response from, uh, from the media on this decision of Arco. So in that sense, uh, it was covered quite, quite clearly. Now, all your artistic work cost controversy, but um, never before your work was censored. What does this incident mean for you personally? 
and, and for, uh, in particular, perhaps also from, for Spanish society in relationship of Well, not in, uh, not in Spain directly. So I consider censorship when you already have your peace, everything is installed, and you have to go out and, and to dismantle because political reasons. In that sense, in Spain was the only time, but I received one, for example, in Mexico, in, in Mexico no? when I was working in a project in Ciudad Juárez. But well, on that time, I understand a little bit what happened because it was an hysteria, an hysteria provoked for the beginning of a war who was starting on that time. And well, I didn't make many scandal. I just leave the country and that's it. Uh, but in that case, it's the first time that seriously happened in Europe, in Spain. Yeah, but how does it affect you? Uh, can you do you feel Positive, kind of yeah. self-censorship or? I feel like no, I, I don't feel bad. I feel at the beginning I was pissed off, but in four days later I realized that they made me a favor. That uh, my so what I was pretending is to make public something that is the existence of political prisoners, and right now in Spain everybody talks about that. About and the they all want to prisoner. buy your work. And I bought uh, and I sell my work, of course. This is always. So, uh, by the way, what's what's the price of the photograph? Uh, without or with or without taxes? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a typical question in Spanish. But with taxes, we do it on the Dutch way. <laughs> with taxes, ninety-six. Ninety-six. Thousand. Thousands. Uh, well, now everybody who uh, is interested in the work, of course, afterwards can go to. Um, Mr. Shera and uh, well, this is it. not. Yes, it's not. It's not seri It's not a series. It's just one, one, one copy. One copy. One so copy it, it, and a lot of publications. No, but the copy is unique. Okay. Okay, but of the twenty-four pictures. Twenty-four pictures. Okay, yeah. so it's not ninety-six for each picture. So what I mean is okay, that it's not an edition. It's just one. Copy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, for these uh, explanations. Um, Caesar strawberry. Um, I do it in English. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Um, well, first of all, about the, the remarks you made on, on Twitter. Okay, there was, there, there was this thing about this uh, Roscon. Roscon is a little cookie, by the way. Uh, which contained a bomb, a Roscon Bomba, uh, which would be a good um, thing to give the, the king at his birthday. Of course, that, that was clear that it was uh, um, quite funny. But you also said some other things. Um, the thing is, we, we couldn't find it back on, on Twitter. Probably it was removed. But um, <coughs> you said, for instance, Um, el fascismo sin complejos de Aguirre me hace añorar hasta los grapo. <laughs> Which more or less says, okay, the, the fascism uh, without com complexes of uh, Aguirre, which is a conservative politician, um, uh, likes, uh, I, I have the, 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 the need to see again the, the, the people from Grapo, which was a terrorist uh, organization uh, of uh, anarchists in the in the 70s i think uh, the latest and uh, then was uh, resolved he also said um for instance a bit more difficult to understand street fighter edition post eta ortega lara versus eduardo madina <laughs> which is um ortega lara is is um an an uh, a man who was um, imprisoned by ETA for a long time and uh, uh, then released. And Eduardo Medina lost his uh, both legs, I think, of at least one leg in a bomb attack of ETA. Um, now, the Tribunal Supremo said that this kind of remarks um, pretend to, to defend the, 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 the ideas of a of a terrorist organization and also humil humiliated its victims. What, what, could you explain a bit the background of these Twitters? Tweets, sorry. Sí, por supuesto. En primer lugar, señalar que me extraña que no hayas encontrado los tweets es porque no has buscado, porque yo no he borrado nada y además están reproducidos 
en, en muchísimas eh, eh, sí. cadenas de, de la ultraderecha española para repetirlos constantemente para eh, bueno pues que les parece muy mal I didn't remove the tweets, um, and you can still find them. They're being repeated by the ultra-right in Spain. They keep repeating it, so it's strange. You must have not searched for the tweets. La ironía y el sarcasmo sobre políticos de mi país, todos mis tweets versan sobre políticos de mi país, es un derecho que tengo como ciudadano, y así lo reconocen las leyes que me amparan. Para empezar, la propia constitución de mi país en su artículo 20, y por extensión, y a, eh, a las leyes europeas con las cuales están absolviendo absolutamente cualquier causa parecida que esté llegando al Tribunal de Derechos Humanos de Estrasburgo. Irony and sarcasm um, with respect to my country, Spain, is really a right that each and every citizen has, and so I have that right as well. Plus, these rights are enshrined in the law in the Constitution, for instance, in Article 20 of the Constitution, but also European laws, and even um, defended by the uh, Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. Eh, en cuanto a los dos tweets que has mencionado, el primero, el fascismo sin complejos, bueno, es que no me acuerdo, pero eh, es una alegoría onírica extrema sobre dos contra, la contraposición de el fascismo de una persona que defiende que el partido Podemos, partido de izquierda, es ETA, y así lo dijo públicamente, Esperanza Aguirre, y un, un grupo terrorista extinto que se llamaba, era eh, grupo antifascista, se, se consideraba un grupo antifascista. Y, como llevo haciendo desde hace 30 años, es un juego de palabras que dentro del marco de lo que es mi obra, mi obra provocadora, revulsiva y que siempre tensa los límites de la libertad de expresión para que no se contraigan, tiene todo el sentido, hasta el punto de que la propia Audiencia Nacional, que es un tribunal heredero directo del tribunal fascista de orden público de Franco, decisió, decidió absolverme. Y luego el Supremo, en, una, en un giro político, me condenó, pero se de sobra que cuando yo llegue, en mi caso llegue por al favor. tribunal, eh, eh, sí, pero tiene para tanto ver. papel. <risa> First of all, the two the two tweets, the fas the fascism without complexes. I can't even remember what the tweet was. It was an allegory, really. Um, it was actually a contradiction of a fascist person, Podemos, being compared to ETA. Uh, it was Esperanza Aguirre, it was about uh, an anti-fascist group. And actually, I, for 30 years, have, have been doing these, playing these games of words, provoking, in, uh, inciting people, actually looking for the limits of uh, freedom of expression. And the Audiencia Nacional, in fact, which is a descendant or an heir, if you will, an inheritance of, um, of the Franco regime, absolved me. And afterwards, I was sentenced by the Supreme Court. Y sé que si esto llega al Tribunal de Derecho de Estrasburgo, del Tribunal de Derechos Humanos de Estrasburgo, muy probablemente me regalen un roscón de Reyes. <laughs> I think that this, if this ever appears, this case ever appears before the Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg, I'm sure that they will uh, be giving me a piece of this cake or this biscuit. Okay. Y para terminar, para terminar, una última puntualización. En el caso del tuit de Ortega Lara y Madina versus Madina, eh, recordar que Ma eh, Eduardo Madina, víctima de ETA, es amigo mío porque le gusta mucho mi música y nunca ha entendido, y, y así lo ha expresado públicamente, por qué se me ha condenado. Y por otro lado, Ortega Lara en ningún momento ha interpuesto ninguna, ninguna querella contra mí. Esto es una, un asunto político, al margen de los tweets. And as far as the other tweet is concerned of Ortega and Medina, Medina is, he's a victim of ETA and he's a friend of mine. And he's actually said that he doesn't understand why all this happened and why I was um, sentenced. And Ortega has not filed any claim against me. Okay, that's clear. But you were accused of glorifying terrorism. Did you see this coming? 
crecimiento del terrorismo. Eh, ¿Viste o sentiste que, que esto...? Eh, yo siempre, vuelvo a insistir, he tensado la libertad de, de expresión, los límites de la libertad de expresión en mi país porque siempre han sido muy pequeños, porque vivimos en un régimen heredado de una dictadura y que nunca ha sido una democracia plena al estilo de cualquier país europeo en cuanto a derechos y libertades. Entonces, libertad que no ejerces hasta su límite, libertad que te quitan. Y yo, con mi grupo, en, estos, en las novelas que yo he, o sea, también soy escritor, las novelas que he publicado, mis intervenciones en televisión, en, en cine y en, en un montón de medios, siempre he jugado con el sarcasmo y la provocación como un arma artística, un elemento de trabajo artístico. Que ahora eso se quiera recortar, solo responde a la vocación de un gobierno que pretende recortar libertades reconocidas en los derechos, en las cartas, en los convenios de derechos humanos firmados con la Unión Europea y con la ONU, nada más. I've always, in everything I've said, I've always tried to look for these limits in the freedom of expression. And, um, and this freedom of expression, the freedom that we have, is very limited, is very narrow. Um, and we're dealing with a regime that has been inherited from, di from dictatorship. And it's never really been, there's never really been a full-fledged uh, democracy in my country, not like in other countries such as other European countries. So if you do not, Um, benefit from the margins you have in the freedom of expression, if you don't take it to the limit, it'll be taken away from you. And I've always done this in, my, in the novels that I write. I'm a writer as well, and whenever I appeared on TV, uh, in film, I've always used sarcasm and provocation as uh, an artistic weapon. And the government is trying to curtail these freedoms, Um, but these freedoms are enshrined, enshrined in legislation, European re legislation, and also um, in regulations of the UN. Okay, that's clear. Um, now, I didn't see the tweets. I could, perhaps I uh, don't read the right. Uh, yeah, okay, but uh, probably I, I, I don't, uh, didn't find the right uh, extreme right-wing um, publications where they're still... Uh, can be found. Um, but so we, we, we have this uh, little piece of uh, a song of Valtonic, a colleague of yours, musician, rapper. You're not a real rapper, I think, but at least you know him and you also talked about him. And um, just to have an idea, this was one of the uh, um, pieces of music for which Valtonic and at the end was uh, condemned for three more than three years Um, imprisonment. At the moment, he's still unknown where he is, I think. And they said he's in Belgium. They say he's in Belgium, but we haven't seen anything of him last week. Last week, he had to be in jail, but he went away. He flew from Spain. And where he is at the moment is uh, quite unclear. Maybe Belgium. Sorry? Without his lawyer. Yeah, yeah, I know his lawyer, Boyer, yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> he doesn't say it either. Okay, could we have the piece of music, please? There's no sound. <laughs> oh dear. Now, for the non Spanish speakers, I must excuse this. This is a I think it's Spanish or even Catalan or Mario Kim text. So. Monarcas, masoquistas, ignorants, no podem triar, no tenim cap opció, però un dia ocuparem Mari Penta, Mucalas, Nico, Fey, respectuós a la Constitució, en canvi els drets humans els passa pels coeons. Yeah, és amb el tònic per la tuerca, rap a Mallorquí des de Mallorca, des de l'illa també lluitant per la Tercera República, companys. En Feilant se'n dona compte i se vol morir, que el seu predi un dictador el va elegir, que per que naixia l'os gal i que no és democràtic sinó un dictador mascarat. Dedicat al mal. 
màrtirs de la bandera republicana. Espero que el medis de manipulación desperten y reflexen la veritat de este país y no reflexar todo su interés en si don Juan Carlos se ha rompido una cadera, ya ja que según la Constitución vivimos en un estado demócrata de igualdad y todo esto es contradictorio. Ok. Everybody clear what, what he said? <laughs> well, it, it was, you, you, you made an uh, can you introduce it in English or I should just pick out one piece about the song? No, no, you didn't, no, okay, sorry. Uh, it was a bit, bit too much, we didn't um, tra train this before, so um, basically in, in this piece, it's relatively not that, that, that heavy, he just says that he wants to take a Kalashnikov and go to the uh, summer palace of the king and, and yeah, do some things there. Um, the thing is that he also said some other uh, things for which he was condemned to this uh, uh, th more than three years jail time. Um, he said among other things about Jose Ramon Bausa, which is a conser conservative politician, Bausa debería morir en una cámara de gas. Pero va. Eso es poco. Su casa, su farmacia, le prenderemos fuego. Well, to uh, say it in English, that Bausa should die in a gas chamber. And uh, if that is not enough, we um, put fire on his house, his um, farmacia. He, uh, he works there. Yeah pharmacy and, um, well, put fire on it, basically. And there was another thing. He was not convicted for that, but that's, that's more recent. He said during a concert, Matat a un puto guardia civil esta noche, iros a pueblo donde haya guardia civiles y matat a uno. ¿Qué crees? ¿Que, que Baltonic es un gurú que le dice a la gente lo que tiene que hacer y la gente le obedece? Let me, please, let me please first. Baltonic is a guru and that he tells people what to do and the people actually do what he says. A Baltonic, un chaval que cuando hizo esta canción tenía 20 años y vivía en un pueblo de las Islas Baleares donde muchos veraneraréis o conoceréis, no le conocía nadie. Es decir, aquí vemos un ejemplo del efecto Streisand en su máxima expresión. Ok, well, you, you were, we were faster than I was. I didn't even ask you a question, but <laughs> basically the, the, the quote was that uh, he said, okay, uh, to his public, uh, go and kill a Guardia Civil, a bloody uh, Guardia Civil this night, and um, go to one of those villages where you know that you can find Guardia Civilis and pick one out and kill him. Now, as you said... How many people actually went and did what he said that they should do? Well, not, not one, unfortunately. No, 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 no. Pues, según dice la ley europea a la que todos los aquí presentes debemos acato y obligado cumplimiento, si no hay una incitación directa a un acto de violencia demostrable, es libertad de expresión. But do you think that there is any limit? to artistic freedom of expression. What is the limit? ¿Cuál es el límite? El límite de la libertad de expresión está muy bien eh, expuesto en la ley europea y dice que si no hay una incitación directa y comprobable a la, a la comisión de un, de un atentado contra la seguridad física de alguien, es libertad de expresión. Y lo que hizo Baltónica aquella noche fue una estupidez de un posadolescente rapero que está en un escenario, por la razón que sea, dice eso. Pero en ningún caso es incita a nadie porque nadie hizo nada, nadie le hace caso. Es absurdo. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, well, well, I, um, what I want oh, sorry, sorry. To... Ah, yeah, we have to... okay. um, well, the limits of freedom of expression are actually laid down in European legislation. Uh, where it says that if there is no direct incitement to physically attack, uh, to injure someone, it is freedom of expression. And that is precisely what it was. There was no incitement. It was just something stupid that a young guy said. Uh, he's post-adolescent. He's a rapper. He was on stage. Um, 
that's what he did. He's young, nobody knew him at the time, um, and he's, he's a young guy, a 20-year-old guy from uh, the Balear Islands. Many of you spend your summers there. Yes, please. See, what I want to say is that when, when Julio Iglesias is singing uh, a love song, he's not in love. He's acting. He's an art. It's, it's art. <laughs> Okay. And this is the same. It's an, uh, it's an artist singing, and I have a Kalashnikov. I'm going to kill everyone. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's physically going to kill someone. And I think that we know that, and in court they know that. So what they are doing is because they are evil, because they want to make, to make, ha make heart. No? Yeah, three, three years in jailment. Um, last question for the both of you. What do you think that these actions what happened in the, in, the, in the last years against uh, people making tweets, doing rap, um, presenting art, pieces of art. Is this a, a, a trend or is it just some individual case? Do you see really uh, a line in it? Is, is something happening in Spain at the moment? Yes, that's what we are talking here. Yeah. Perdón. La ofensiva represiva que está teniendo lugar en España responde a una estrategia para sembrar inseguridad jurídica en la población, que no sepa la gente qué es legal y qué no es legal, y así incitar a la autocensura para llevarnos a... A la, a la distopía de Orwell expuesta en 1984, en lo cual cualquier cosa que pienses puede ser delito, con lo cual mejor te callas. Ok. Actually, what this is is a repressive offense um, or a repressive attack, really. Uh, it is uh, a policy, indeed, to create legal uncertainty among um, the population so that you don't know what is legal and what is not legal, what you can say, what you cannot say, and that would lead to, some, to a certain degree of self-censorship, and that would, again, lead us to uh, 1984 Orwell, in which you don't know what you can and cannot say, so better not say anything. That's clear. Okay, we, we have to leave it for now uh, at this moment. Yes, I just wanted to, to invite you to do some short questions because we're getting short on time. Okay. Um, the question that I have is um, not especially for uh, my uh, friends from uh, Spain. Um, we are talking about um, the freedom of expression and about that uh, rappers, uh, artists are being, uh, being uh, you say, uh, censored by, by the Spanish uh, government. But the other way, we are not talking about uh, a Spanish uh, radio presentator called uh, Los Santos, who is uh, saying that uh, the Spanish should uh, uh, bomb uh, Bavarian uh, beer, uh, yeah, beer sellers. Uh, uh, they should, uh, uh, how do you say, um, bomb Catalonia. Or yeah, yeah, but uh, we will come back on the Catalan. Uh situation but but we are not talking we're not here tonight uh, to talk about los santos and and the things he said no, 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 but you, we are talking about, about uh, that these people are uh, how you say it they are co uh, convicted for freedom of speech but the things that the other side does that's only an uh, a personal opinion without any consequences so mm -hmm. yeah okay I think, um, I think uh, just one more question. I, I saw a hand appearing. Okay. Sorry? Now, one last one, and then we go to the second. Ah. There, there, there. Yes, known face. It's me. Um, I just would like to ask you if there is not a bit of a contradiction uh, because you are saying that Valtonic was just a stupid adolescent or post-adolescent saying stupid things and he's not inciting anything, but you are in a way excusing his freedom of expression. 
you are explaining that he was saying a stupid thing whereas he was expressing his freedom. It's not a big of a contradiction. I don't understand. Lo que, lo que reivindicamos en estos momentos en España y enlazo las dos cuestiones es gozar todos de la misma libertad de expresión que Jiménez Los Santos. Actually, what we're claiming in Spain is that we, what we're claiming in Spain, and I'm tying into both questions, is that we all in Spain enjoy the same freedom of expression as Jiménez Los Santos. So you defend Jiménez Los Santos. O sea que le defiendes. Yo defiendo la libertad y el derecho que tiene Jiménez Los Santos a, sí. a decir eso sin que yo me escandalice, sino que es un tolai. Pues lo que no me gusta, no lo oigo. Lo que no me interesa, no voy a escucharlo. Me quedo en mi casa escuchando lo que me gusta. I think it's very funny, ¿no? Los Santos, I like it. Hey. Los Santos, OK Diario, those um, stream rights magazine I, or, or opinion media are very funny, ¿no? I, I like to... Okay, well... I, I think it's a freedom, a freedom of expression. It's his right to say what he says. And if I don't like something, <coughs> I just don't listen. Okay, that's clear. Well, then we leave it for this vale, block así. with uh, Jimenez Los Santos, who can be funny. So <laughs> it might be. Um, <laughs> let's see. We go to the second block. Oh, and. Um, No, 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 no. Okay, I, I present to you uh, Chel Burnett. She's a Spanish journalist. She's working uh, for the radio, for the public Catalan radio, of course. And she's partner of the Jilt political activist Jordi Cuchar, who uh, led um, a prominent separatist group called Omnium Cultural. Um, Jordi Cuchar is, is in jail at the moment. He is taken into custody by the Spanish court last October, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last October. And um, on an accusation of rebellion. Okay, Tel so, Burnett, stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thanks for the invitation and also thanks to Santiago Sierra not only for the invitation, also for the, this piece. I will try to do it in English. We'll try, okay? I would like to tell you about the situation of my partner within the context of the repression that we are living through in Catalonia. His name is Jordi Cuchar. He is the political prisoner number 57 in Santiago Sierra work of art. And he is also the president of Omnium Cultural. Omnium Cultural, in fact, is a, an independent cultural association without uh, subventions, no taxes from the government, which has 117,000 1, members. One, the last one is Vigo Mortensen. Omnium was uh, founded under the Francois regime with the aim to protect the Catalan culture, which at this time was really being brutally suppressed. Today, it continues, it's not a question of separatism. This organization today continues to organize prestigious literal, literary awards and believes that the culture is a tool to help to create a social cohesion and defends the immigration as a key structural element in the Catalan society. It lent its support to the referendum on independence, believing that citizens had the right to express themselves freely either for or against. Because the point here was not only the legitimate right to the self-determination, in fact, is the right to defend the ability to choose. It's, it seems a, a, a joke, but it's not a, it's not a joke. Millions of Catalans have been demonstrating peacefully in the streets year after year this thing. Then, out of the blue, thousands of Spanish police officers came to Catalonia, almost like an occupying army. They searched printing presses looking for the posters that promote the referendum or the voting slips. 
Citizens demonstrate, make, they were doing demonstrations in front of, of the doors of these raided buildings, often with carnations in hand in a kind of protest. The largest demonstration took place uh, uh, the 20th September in front of, of the Catalan Ministry for the Economy where a raid was in progress. In general, the huge mobilization of the citizens and their empowerment are vital to understand what is happening today in Catalonia. Sorry for my bad English, excuse me. <laughs> Using the, the right to freedom of expression and the right to freely demonstrate, some 40,000 people and organizations protested on that day, on 20th September. As a result, on October 16th, the leaders of the two main civil society organizations, because my partner is not a politician, even if he's a political prisoner, they were in jail, refused bail, and placed in preventive detention in a way that had not precedence in Spain, floating that country's jurisprudence and rule of law. Amnesty International asked, uh, asked for the release and if you read the interim judgments which keep them in jail justify their continued incarceration on the grounds that their ideology poses a risk of criminal recidivism reiteración delictiva i think that uh, is this thing it has been claimed that their release could result in possible future violence on the part of third parties not only are their rights to freedom of expression and the freedom of, of association being violated, but also is the right to hold political opinions, the right to participate in the public life, and the right to have a fair trial, and also the right to an impartial court, as the right to prepare a proper defense and the right, the most important one, the right to the presumption of innocence. They are not the only people in preventive custody. There are also six Catalan government ministers and the speaker of the Catalan parliament that they are also in jail. All of them, together with four of the seven people currently in the exile, they have been accused of rebellion, a crime which implies the personal use of violence on their part and which carry sentences of 30 years in jail. A large, a large sector of the Catalan society has responded to show uh, his solidarity and denouncing what is happening, making a very big demonstrations and this thing uh, is involving hundreds of thousands of people. Every, every day, some people are doing also very little demonstrations, but every day we have some demonstrations against this jail. And now I will talk about my, my personal life. I'm so sorry, but uh, this is the 33rd week that I have been traveling with my 13 uh, month old infant son going to the jail. This jail is 650 kilometers from our home. It means that we should do every week uh, 1,300 kilometers. If you make the, the result for 33 weeks, is 43,000 kilometers that we have been doing during all this time. Uh, this means a very big emotional physical and economic cost. It's only for 40 minutes a week behind a glass and two times per month we have the possibility of two hours together in a room. This form of preventive, preventive custody violates the right that the standards in the United uh, Convention, they say that all the children has. Uh, this uh, lack of the child's right to mental and physical health and his right to see his family can cause irreparable damage in his development. He has already spent more months in his life without a father than with his father. And I, I could say that uh, this baby, he doesn't talk. And uh, the five minutes possible 
of conversation every day by telephone, the father is singing a song. With this song, the child recognizes the father. And this is the only thing that we have to keep our family and construct our family. This kind of violations of the fundamental human rights uh, are going in the extreme that they, uh, all the prisoners in Spain, they have the right of the communications with the family. This is in the Article 39 of the Spanish Constitution. And also the European Parliament, in a recent report of 2017, they say that the dispersion and the distancing of the prisoners has been wrongly condemned condemned because it constitutes an additional punishment for the family members. And I can assure you that if you spend 12 hours every week with a baby for only minutes of conversation, I don't want to say this word, but I feel that is torture. They are torturing us. And uh, the most important is always put in the first place the well-being of the child. In the cases of preventing the preventive detain detention, the Committee of the Rights of the Child recommends also alternative measures like the confiscation of the passports, the bail, or maybe the home arrest, because the jail is a very inappropriate uh, measure because the child suffer this uh, reactive attach disorder because he breaks the relations with the parent. The last thing that I would say is that uh, what we are living today in Catalonia is, and is in Spain, in fact, is a perversion and abuse of the justice. Because uh, using this level of violence by the police only with people that the only thing that they, wanting, that they wanted was voting, and all the world has seen the images of the voters that peacefully were making a, a resistance in the in the places for vote in the pool stations, because voting is not a crime. People in Scotland and people in Quebec, they could vote without suffer this violence, the violence of the state, the, viol the violence of the police. Because in a police, judicial and penal way, with these penal methods, they are trying to arrange something that requires a political dialogue. And, uh, it would appear that Spain has no other resources. What is happening today in Spain, at the, the only methods that they know uh, with this pacific proposal of the Catalan people is use the methods that they use in other times with the terrorism. And sorry, but I was a little bit nervous and maybe something was a little bit confused in my speech. I'm so sorry. So, next one in a row, it's um, Pablo Mayoral. Pablo Mayoral is a member of the Comuna de Presix de Franquismo. Uh, my Catalan is not perfect, so probably I don't pronounce it very well. Uh, it's an association of uh, political repressed of the Franco regime. And uh, their goal is to, to give a direct testimony of the repression that characterized this um, last, particularly the last period of the Franco di dictatorship. Did I say it clearly? Okay, yeah. it's yours, the floor. Bueno, gracias por esta oportunidad para para expresar mi, mi testimonio. El reino de España actual viene en línea directa de la dictadura franquista, sin que haya habido ninguna ruptura y, por lo tanto, delimitación de responsabilidades en el golpe militar fascista. El plan de genocidio, urdido por los responsables de la dictadura franquista, era el aniquilamiento y exterminio sistemático de las personas leales a la República. Por otra parte, a finales de los años 60 y principios de los 70, la lucha antifranquista tuvo un importante auge y por eso creció también la represión. 
En apenas una década, más de 50.000 personas estuvieron afectadas por dichos tribunales. De nuevo se orquestaba un conjunto de medidas contra la población y en particular contra los luchadores antifranquistas. Cuando muere Franco, había en las cárceles franquistas más de 1.200 presos políticos. De forma particular, yo tengo que resaltar lo ocurrido en los meses de julio, agosto y septiembre de 1975. En aquellos días se orquestaron cuatro consejos de guerra. En ellos se pedían 13 penas de muerte. La mía era una de ellas. Se dictaron 11 penas de muerte en unas siniestras farsas de juicio que apenas duraron unas horas cada uno. El 27 de septiembre de 1975 eran fusilados José Humberto Baén Alonso, Ramón García Sán, José Luis Sánchez Bravo en Madrid, Ángel Otaegui en Burgos y Juan Paredes Manot en Barcelona. Las movilizaciones contra la dictadura franquista se multiplicaron dentro y sobre todo fuera de España. Europa fue un clamor contra la dictadura franquista. París, Londres, Roma, Lisboa, Bruselas, Frankfurt, Estocolmo y muchas, muchísimas ciudades más estallaron en grandes manifestaciones de repulsa. México pidió formalmente la expulsión de España de la ONU. A partir de la muerte de Franco, cada parcela de libertad fue arrancada con numerosas huelgas, manifestaciones y todo tipo de movilizaciones. Aún así, la represión fue feroz y las calles se tiñeron de rojo en muchas ocasiones y la policía y jueces franquistas siguieron realizando detenciones. Los responsables de la dictadura franquista aprovecharon para colocar en la Ley de Amnistía de 1977 un artículo que eximía de toda responsabilidad jurídica a los torturadores, los jueces y los jerifaltes de la dictadura. Pues bien, en esa represión franquista y en la falta de exigencias judiciales y penales a sus responsables está el origen de la escalada represiva que en la actualidad está llenando otra vez las cárceles de presos políticos. Así, mientras la, la Fiscalía da órdenes y amenaza a todos los jueces para que no se investiguen los crímenes del franquismo o impide a la, a la justicia argentina sentar en el banquillo de los acusados a los torturadores, jueces y ministros franquistas, esta misma Fiscalía, el Gobierno y los principales medios de comunicación estatales presionan para dictar órdenes de prisión contra personas que defienden sus posturas políticas. Santiago Sierra, con su obra Presos políticos en la España contemporánea, ha querido visibilizar la existencia de presos políticos en el Estado español, sin focalizar ninguna ideología en concreto, pero dejando claro el amplio espectro de posiciones políticas, especialmente de izquierdas, demostrando que son personas encarceladas por hacer públicas sus ideas. Y nuevamente, desde los resortes del poder, han intentado acallar esta valiente iniciativa artística, que está en la misma línea de denuncia de la represión política de Miró, con la esperanza del condenado a muerte, o del equipo crónica, con variaciones sobre un paredón, o de Juan Genovés con el abrazo. Desde la comuna de expresos del franquismo, queremos solidarizarnos con todos aquellos que, como Santiago Sierra, alzan su voz para denunciar la existencia de presos políticos. Y además queremos denunciar las duras condiciones de encarcelamiento para la mayoría de estos presos, alejados de su, de su lugar de origen para así dificultar las visitas de sus familiares, compañeros y abogados. Fuimos presos del franquismo y exigimos la libertad de los presos de la monarquía. Gracias. Okay, our last statement in the row is uh, Begonia Lalana. Uh, she's a Spanish lawyer. We are with a lot of lawyers to, tonight. Specialized in criminal law and member of the Asociación Libre de Abogados, and also a member of the platform No Somos Delito. As a lawyer, she has worked on uh, several cases of uh, contemporary um, political prisoners or um, politicians imprisoned how you like to call it, and um, 
Also, I think you, you worked on the, the, the Le Mordaza, the, the famous law which can make it very easy to jail people who form part of protests. Okay, Bruna, the floor is yours. Bueno, quiero agradecer al foro la organización de estas jornadas tan interesantes, por lo menos hasta el momento. Agradeceros a todas y a todos vuestra presencia y a Santiago también darme la oportunidad de participar en ellas. Eh, un viejo aforismo sostiene que el pensamiento no delinque. Esta idea fue incorporada a las modernas teorías del derecho penal en los siglos XVIII y XIX. En las sociedades democráticas la expresión del pensamiento tampoco debería ser delito, con dos excepciones. Si lo que se expresa es una amenaza, causar un mal a una persona o a sus próximas, o si las expresiones son injuriosas o calumniosas, menoscabar la dignidad de una persona o imputarla falsamente un delito respectivamente. Incluso en este caso, y aunque con algunas limitaciones, si se prueba la veracidad de lo imputado no habría delito. Artículos 210 y 207 del Código Penal Español. El mero insulto ha quedado despenalizado, excepto para el rey, el parlamento y las altas instituciones del Estado. Desigualdad ante la ley en favor además de personas que gozan de protección institucional. Varias iniciativas parlamentarias, desde Esquerra Republicana al inicio de la legislatura o la más reciente presentada por Izquierda Unida, han pretendido la despenalización de uno o varios de estos delitos. Hay ocasiones en que el pensamiento se convierte en acción política, individual o colectiva, a través de la expresión crítica de los asuntos públicos o a través de la participación política directa. La protección a la participación política está amparada por la Constitución, artículo 23, por el artículo 21 de la Declaración Universal de los Derechos Humanos, artículos 19, 1 y 25 del Pacto de los Derechos Civiles y Políticos, 10 y 12 de la Carta Europea de Derechos Humanos, 7 y 8 de la Convención contra todas las formas de discriminación contra la mujer y un largo etcétera. No es necesaria ni conveniente la autorización previa para su ejercicio. Es imprescindible que este derecho se ejerza sin discriminación frente a ideas incómodas o alejadas de los círculos del poder. Recuerda Luigi Ferraioli que los derechos y garantías son la ley del más débil. Los derechos humanos nacieron como defensa legítima de las ciudadanas y los ciudadanos, la parte más débil, frente al poder. Y son más necesarias cuanto más, se constriñe, cuanto más constriñe este a las personas. Se suele definir el Código Penal como la Constitución negativa. En él deben establecerse de forma restrictiva, clara y taxativa los hechos que son constitutivos de delito. Las leyes penales en vigor no pueden ampliarse para adecuarse a la necesidad de castigo en un momento determinado. En todo caso, los delitos deben castigar hechos, no personas. Los tribunales, si respetan el sistema de garantías del que nos hemos dotado, deben siempre juzgar hechos y deben hacerlo por aserciones verificables y que puedan ser refutadas. Por el contrario, cuando el juicio se deja a la autoridad del juez, decae el sistema de garantías para acercarnos a un modelo autoritario. La verificación de los hechos que son constitutivos de delito y de las pruebas en que se fundan es útil no solo a la persona acusada, también lo es a la sociedad en su conjunto y particularmente a las víctimas. Aquella y estas tienen antes que nada el derecho a la verdad. Las leyes elaboradas para combatir el terrorismo y el desarrollo de leyes del llamado derecho penal del enemigo han supuesto un enorme retroceso en las sociedades democráticas. Se normaliza la excepcionalidad. La prisión debe acomodarse siempre a la ley, sobre todo la prisión preventiva, que no debe olvidarse que se aplica a personas inocentes. Esto es la presunción de inocencia. No puede sostenerse en la opinión de un juez ni en una doctrina, sino en la más estricta legalidad. No puede aplicarse como castigo. No puede, no debe quebrar el sentido común. La prisión, desde luego, no puede buscar el efecto desaliento o shilling effect que ha desarrollado la doctrina del Tribunal Europeo de Derechos Humanos que considera que no puede haber intervenciones públicas respecto del ejercicio de derechos fundamentales que generen en el particular afectado o en terceros un efecto desaliento a la hora de ejercer derechos fundamentales. No puede, en definitiva, utilizarse para impedir que una persona que no tiene ninguna limitación de sus derechos civiles pueda ejercerlos plenamente 
plenamente, sobre todo cuando esos derechos no son propios, sino que son la manifestación de soberanía de las ciudadanas y ciudadanos a las que representa. Okay, <laughs> we are running awfully out of time, but um, nonetheless, I would uh, I would like to ask some questions. One of the first thing um, is to make it a bit more concrete what we are talking about in in the case of your husband. Um, the the argument of the the, the judge of the Tribunal Supremo, uh, Yarena, is that he he was uh, or is in jail because of this process for a rebellion um, and against the state. And this is basically um, based on um, um, a manifestation that, that took place in front of the uh, Consejería de Economía in, in Barcelona on that evening. And we have some uh, footage of that night. So please could we have a look so we can see what we're talking about that night in Barcelona in front of the Consejería Economía. explica a un compañero que no pueden salir del edificio. Hay un pelotón atrapado. Hay 18 compañeros que están metidos en un edificio atrincherados y están completamente rodeados. De hecho, los vehículos los hemos perdido. Vehículos como este sobre el que los dirigentes de la Asamblea Nacional y Omnium llaman a la movilización. Ante miles de personas que protestan por la detención de 14 altos cargos de la Generalitat ese mismo día. Se están marcando posibilidades desde un helicóptero de una azotea o entradas en fuego eh, por las calles hacer un paso de seguridad. Y así fue como salieron a la una y media de la madrugada, entre gritos e insultos, cuando los mozos acudieron finalmente en su ayuda, después de que Trapero fuera llamado directamente por el juez que había ordenado el registro y le ordenara que les sacara de allí. La secretaria judicial tuvo que hacerlo a través de la azotea y así quedaron sus coches. La juez Carmen Lamela quiere saber por qué tardaron tanto en actuar, por qué la intendente contestó, según el atestado de la Guardia Civil, con un no puedo a las peticiones de ayuda. Les investiga por un posible delito de sedición como responsables del asedio, unos por animar a la multitud, otros por no ayudar a la Guardia Civil. Pulsar y Sánchez se enfrentarían a 10 años de cárcel y Trapero y su intendente a 15 por ser cargos públicos. Okay, this was the footage of the night, which is actually uh, in central piece in the in the um, the reason that that your your husband. No, not really the the reason, and maybe for this uh, answer, I prefer to ask in Spanish because I think I I prefer to go to give a correct uh, words about it, and then you don't mind if I change to Spanish. Uh, I don't mind, but. Um, because I think that I should be very precise yeah, yeah, about all imagine, yeah. what is happening because it's the life of my husband, maybe 30 years in jail. Yeah, yeah, I, I can, but I just want to ask you to, si. to, to keep it very si. punctual. Yeah. Punctual. Yeah, the thing is, la cosa es que realmente ahora su acusación no es una acusación de, de sedición, es una acusación de, de rebelión y no es una acusación por esta manifestación, sino porque, digamos que en el relato, igual que este es un relato que ha hecho Televisión Española, porque este es part of the footage, it's not all the footage, eh, yo podría enseñarle imágenes de otras televisiones donde usted puede ver un cordón de seguridad, uno hecho por los Mossos de Escuadra, la Policía Catalana, y un segundo cordón de seguridad hecho por los voluntarios de una de las asociaciones, pues casualmente no es la de mi compañero, es la del otro señor Sánchez. Uh, this, this was not from the Spanish television. No, this no, no. La Vanguardia. No, 
No, but, but the, the voice, the voice is the Spanish television. No, no, the voice is the Spanish television. I know very well the, the voices of the, the journalists. But I could give you, if you want, for the next time, the images uh, of this cordon of security. Entonces, ahora la acusación, inicialmente, era una acusación de sedición por impedir el trabajo de, de la señora que estaba haciendo el registro dentro. Luego... Yeah. Sorry, baby, it's too much. <laughs> well, actually, this charge now is not sedition, but rebellion. And the report that we saw, the footage that we saw, was from the Spanish television, which is part of the footage. And actually, I could show you more footage. There is more footage in which the security cordon is made up by the uh, Mossos de Escuadra, the uh, police in Catalonia, and volunteers of another group, not my partner's group, but uh, Mr. Sanchez's group. And in fact, initially, the charge was sedition for impeding uh, this woman to do her work. To go outside. Mm -hmm. Pero yo os puedo asegurar, porque he hablado con, con mi compañero, que varias veces le dijeron a esta señora que estaba trabajando si quería salir por este cordón de seguridad que os puedo enseñar imágenes de la televisión pública y ella no quiso salir nunca. Pero digamos que el caso ha cogido, es mucho más complejo que esta manifestación. Eh, no quiero robar tiempo, pero aquí a ellos dos se les hace una acusación por sedición, pero después que esto fue hecho por la Audiencia Nacional que tampoco tenía competencias porque los actos pasaban en Cataluña y tendría que haber sido un juzgado en Cataluña, pasó al Tribunal Supremo que ha construido una trama mucho más grande en la que quiere demostrar que el gobierno de Cataluña hace rebelión a través de sus ciudadanos que pueden llegar a ser uh, violentos cuando realmente estos coches... Desde primera hora del día la concentración empezó a las ocho y media de la mañana de una manera espontánea y a ella subieron en estos coches, primero lo que subieron fueron sobre todo muchos eh, periodistas. Puede haber un, un vandalismo colectivo en haber destrozado estos coches, pero nadie murió y realmente se puede demostrar que siempre se pudo salir y ellos tenían diálogo constante con la Guardia Civil. Sorry. Por la... <risa> Uh, I assure you, and I know this because I talked to my partner, this woman had the possibility of leaving. She was asked whether she wanted to leave through this security cordon. She didn't want to leave. And in fact, the situation is much more complex than that. Um, this whole manifestation, there are several angles to it. And initially, as I said, the charge was sedition, and then uh, the case was presented by the Audiencia Nacional, which actually doesn't have um, jurisdiction because this was a matter that occurred in, in Catalonia, and uh, the, co the, the case should have been presented before a court in Catalonia, a regional court. Uh, in the end, it appeared before the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court started a very uh, extended procedure, and, um, is and the allegation is actually that the Catalan government is uh, committing rebellion through its citizens, um, that the citizens may have acted violently. But in fact, the whole manifestation started at 8.30 in the morning, and there were these cars. But in fact, the people who um, climbed up on, onto these cars were mainly journalists. And there may have been some coll collective vandalism, but no one died, in fact. And there was this possibility of, of getting out of there, of exiting the situation. Um, that's it. And the, the last thing is that uh, if the independence of Catalonia was declared the 27 October, they try to pretend that the violence is more than one month before. Then if the, the crime is a rebellion for the independence with violence, it could be, it's impossible that the violence is a violence that happened 40 years before. This is one of these strange, uh, uh, how do you say relato? Yeah, yeah. Story no, I can understand. The, but the, 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 point is, the point is why I, I showed this footage yes. is that if you talk about political prisoners, it goes about people who are in prison because of their thoughts, about their opinions in this case, because they are in favor of an own Catalan state. The thing is that in the accusation, it was exactly this fact. Well, maybe it changed, I don't yeah. know. But it, it was this act, actual actuation, the facts, what, what happened that night, that was mentioned. So it was not a case of uh, opinions, 
it was a case of things, what happened that night, and the acts that were committed. Yeah, but if you read, uh, how do you say in English, the, the autos, I think that is the interims. Como dices los autos? The veredicts, pero no son, no, no son veredicts, son... Uh, No, no. No, la, son lo, cuando... ¿Por qué no salen ellos de la cárcel? En todos los autos judiciales escritos por el juez, él dice que no los puede dejar salir porque comparten una ideología que es la, la ideología que quiere la independencia. Es decir, realmente el motivo por la prisión preventiva es porque ellos comparten una ideología que es la ideología de querer hacer la independencia. No se, no, no se refiere a ninguna otra cosa cuando les, les priva de su libertad. Ok. The court orders um, that don't allow them to, to, uh, to leave prison, uh, the reason why they are in custody is because they share an ideology and the ideology is focused on independence. So those are the reasons and those reasons have been specified in the court orders. Okay. But I, last thing, last thing. Yeah. In these images that you show, I didn't see the violence of the day of the referendum. Yeah. It's the only thing that I say. In comparison, I think that this is not violence. Yeah. Okay, to come back to the, the, the political prisoners. Um, I, I, I have a small question. Um, to ask about the, the Franco regime. Of course, um, we all know that there were political prisoners then, and they uh, became, uh, some of them became quite, quite famous, of course, for their, uh, their fight. Um, now, being a political prisoner is, is, is a very strong um, statement, uh, because you're, you're being uh, persecuted because of your thoughts which was clearly the case on, on the Franco. Now, there are other people from um, those uh, persecuted people on the Franco which don't actually agree with your statement. They say, uh, and they declare that also publicly, we, perhaps we could see a moment that uh, footage of the newspaper, um, another Catalan newspaper, El Periodico, that they say, okay, in Spain we don't have political prisoners, um, and uh, th this was, they made a declaration about it. They, they said it's, it's not true, because nobody is um, really being uh, persecuted for his ideas. It's, it's for other reasons, but not for his ideas. And apart from that, Spain today is a state of Estado uh, de Derecho. Um, in which we can, I have to, please, I have to uh, also let know other people and other opinions here. I mean, the fact is that these guys who were just like you, Frank, uh, under Franco prisoners, they say, it's not true, we, we're not living in the same period, we're not living in the same conditions as under Franco. You can't compare those two and make one line and say that Spain is still a Franco state. Don't you think it's, it's a bit um, dangerous to make that comparison, to use the same kind of denomination for the people who are now imprisoned, and you can agree with that or not, but to use the same kind of words, political prisoners? Yo pienso que no, que, que nosotros estábamos presos políticos por luchar contra, contra una dictadura, contra la dictadura franquista. Y hoy los 74 presos políticos que Santiago ha reflejado en, en, esta, en esta monumental obra, pues están por lo mismo que estábamos nosotros, es decir, por luchar por sus ideas. En concreto, pues Jordi Cuchar está por, por el derecho de autodeterminación, por el cual también estaba yo preso en, en la dictadura franquista. ¿no? El, 
quiere ir más allá, es decir, quiere la independencia para, para su pueblo, pero el derecho a la libre autodeterminación de los pueblos era una reivindicación que teníamos. Es decir, como yo he dicho antes, muchas de las reivindicaciones por las que nosotros estábamos presos, es decir, no se han conseguido, todavía estamos en esa lucha. Es decir, hemos estado unos años en que no se nos ha encarcelado, pero ahora se nos está encarcelando, es decir, se nos está encarcelando por eh, luchar por, por la autodeterminación, por hacer una huelga, por luchar en definitiva por la libertad de expresión. Eh, son las mismas, las mismas condiciones, eh, casi son las mismas cárceles y son las mismas condiciones en las que estábamos nosotros. La dispersión es, decir, es una cosa que, que hoy se está utilizando y se utilizaba entonces y en algunos casos incluso hasta hay condiciones hasta más duras de las que nosotros teníamos por el simple hecho de que nosotros estábamos eh, 1.200 presos políticos, es decir, ahora hay 74, pero esto va creciendo, como no lo paremos, es decir, puede, puede que llegue a tanto. No, por favor. No, I don't, um, <laughs> I don't, I don't agree. Um, we were political prisoners uh, fighting against the dictatorship, dictatorship of Franco at the time, and now there are 74 political prisoners, or um, yeah, political prisoners, as Santiago referred to them uh, in his work of his magnificent work of art, and they are defending their ideas, and I was defending my ideas, so we were put in prison for the same reasons. It's the same situation. The only thing is that they go a bit further because they are also claiming uh, and fighting for the independence of their people, and we were fighting for self-determination, free self-determination. Many of the things we fought for at the time have not even been achieved, and now we've lived through a couple of years in which no one was imprisoned, and now all of a sudden people are being imprisoned again. So, um, yeah, we were fighting for the same thing, self-determination, uh, 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 strikes, freedom of speech, actually the same things that these people are in prison uh, for now. And the condition, in fact, some of the prisons are still the same, and the conditions are maybe sometimes even the same, this dispersion, this, uh, what happened with the, the distance between the families and the person in the, in, um, who's imprisoned. And some, in some respects, conditions are even harsher now. But we were uh, 1,200 political prisoners, and now there are only 74. If we don't put a stop to it, it'll just go on and on. Okay, just one little remark. Um, that is that uh, this, one, this statement was made also by a former ETA uh, member, Ed Eduardo Uriarte, who was uh, condemned uh, to be executed uh, by the Franco regime in 1970 in the famous Burgos process. And he says, literally, nuestra constitución garantiza que nadie puede ser perseguido por motivos ideológicos, políticos y religiosos. How can you explain that this, um, let's say, different opinions exist within the uh, group of former political prisoners on the Franco? Bueno, no sé qué pensaría esta, esta persona. Sí que está claro que, que ha habido muchas cosas que han cambiado, como yo decía, gracias a, a múltiples manifestaciones, gracias a muchas luchas y gracias a muchos muertos en la calle que consiguieron hacer cambiar las cosas. Yo fui condenado a 30 años en un consejo de guerra que duró dos, dos, dos horas. Es decir, sí que está claro que, que hoy han cambiado esas cosas, pero también está claro es decir, que hoy están condenando a la cárcel eh, por, eh, huelga, por participar en una huelga general, es decir, por eh, manifestarse, por ejercer la, la libertad de expresión, por eh, promover un, un referéndum, y estos son hechos incontestables. Lo diga eh, quien lo diga, es decir, y no se pueden... Eh, justificar de ninguna de las maneras, es decir, ni porque uno haya pasado años de prisión, ni porque uno haya estado en las peores condiciones de vida. I don't know what this uh, person is thinking, but um, many things have in fact changed since then, um, and things have changed thanks to this this fight for freedom manifestations, lots of people have died in the wake of all this. 
And yes, I was sentenced to 30 years of imprisonment by a court martial that only took two hours. Now that is not taking place right now, but people are being sentenced for taking part in general strikes, if for uh, exercising their right to freedom of speech, for promoting a referendum. Um, whichever way you look at it, you cannot justify that. Okay, last question because we're running out of time. Begonia yeah, Lalana. Um, you have worked also with the famous uh, Lei Mordaza. Now, um, could you shortly explain what exactly contains this law, the Lei Mordaza, and do you think it will um, be changing now with the fact that tomorrow we have another government that might have another thought about it? Empezando por la última cuestión, soy bastante pesimista, porque la ley Mordaza es una ley que endurece la represión administrativa contra los ciudadanos, que es en lo que consiste la ley Mordaza, que ya tenía un precedente en lo que se llamó la ley Corcuera o ley de la patada en la puerta, que fue parcialmente incluso declarada inconstitucional y fue hecha por un ministro del Interior socialista. Son leyes bastante similares en conceptos, a mi juicio, muy autoritarios, como por ejemplo que prevalece la veracidad de las manifestaciones que hacen los funcionarios de policía frente a las manifestaciones que hacen los ciudadanos. Cuando un policía dice esto ha sido así, eso hace prueba, el ciudadano lo niega, eso no hace prueba. El mismo artículo que dice esto obliga a la policía a recoger las pruebas de lo que está sosteniendo, pero esto la policía no lo hace nunca. Se limita a hacer su manifestación y a ratificarlo. Permite los cacheos incluso con desnudo en las calles. Establece controles específicos… Ah, perdón. Well, in fact, I'm rather pessimistic. This ley mordazo, this gag law, is in fact an administrative form of repression against um, citizens. And actually, before there was another law, uh, the ley corcuera and ley patada a la puerta, <laughs> kicking in a, a door. Uh, and they were devised by a socialist minister. So what I, actually what I'm saying is that these are very authoritarian um, laws and ideas, and in fact, what it, what it what it does is that the police. Uh, it's all about the truth and checking the truth. But whatever the police say says is taken as being the truth, and what citizens says is not necessarily the truth. And all that is uh, generated by this gag law. Okay, um, I I just have to close it down here because we are running awfully out of time and. I think that there's still some questions around. Yes, over there. Yeah, can I, can I hold it myself? Okay. Um, I really would like to thank uh, for the for this evening that you've been uh, presenting. I think it's especially important for me to know if I understood, uh, Stephen, you are a reporter. Are you also uh, covering the news in Spain and bringing them to the Dutch newspapers. Mm -hmm. Here I want to share, I had two experiences of two moments in October where the Telegraph and Volkskrant were presenting photos of hooligans fighting against each other and were presenting it as uh, independent, were fighting against non-independent people in Catalonia. So there is a lot of manipulation, I think, sometimes, and I think it's a lack of, I would like to know your opinion about it. I really appreciate the event and the way you are presenting diversity of opinions here. I really support that 100%, but I'm, I would like also to know what you think about the coverage of this topic here in the Netherlands and how is it linked with the situation, for example, of lack of, ex of freedom of expression or in relation with, for example, Wilders, uh, you know, this whole topic here in the Netherlands. So how are you linking it? Are you making links on what's happening also here? And this is the well, it's a very broad question. My personal view on this is, is I don't think, that important uh, tonight. But um, it's quite difficult to link the situation in the Netherlands, specifically with builders, to uh, the situation in Spain and Catalonia in particular. Um, personally, I think that um, if you talk about manipulation of the news, that unfortunately happens on both sides 
So uh, at, at one side, you see that the uh, specifically the national uh, Spanish uh, public television and radio is uh, awfully biased and uh, manipulating the news coming from there. And we have seen some scandals about that. But unfortunately for you, I have to make the same accusation for the Catalan uh, public radio and television. That, that is the one. Exactly the same. That is the more plural in uh, Spain, thanks to okay, some okay. exams. I, I knew that, that something like this would would cause raw, but uh, you asked my opinion, this is my opinion. Could I have, um, could I have somewhere there? Yeah. I'm coming to you with the microphone. <laughs> the question could you wait for the mic? Uh, oh, sorry, thank you. Uh, now I wanted to answer your question from earlier when you exposed that some uh, Francos prisoners said that the political prisoners nowadays are not political prisoners. And I'd like to say that um, there's a very controversial uh, society in Spain. And it's not understood, you can't understand it uh, in five minutes. And you have to go through all the um, history as well between, for example, Spain and Catalonia or Spain and Basque Country or whatever. And you can't use this as an example of, oh, look, they were p political prisoners and they say that these ones are not, because between the, pol the media manipulation and the people using it in their favor, um, I don't know. Uh, Many what, times what has happened question? that the... Uh, no, I'm, 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 I was, it was an answer. Okay. It was an answer saying that you can't use that okay. as a reason to say that the political prisoners are not. Because there's, it's happened many times that the, the fake left, as he said, has joined the right against Catalonia. That has happened many times. But this is something that you can't know if you has, haven't been living in Catalonia. It's very difficult to explain in five minutes. Okay. The, I would like to say a very short thing about this is in the Franco period, nobody said that they were political prisoners. I think that we need some historical perspective because if in Catalonia nowadays there's a movement of more than two million people going out the streets, uh, uh, giving the solidarity, asking for something else, this is not, they are not criminals that uh, they uh, are uh, robbing money for make a big, big pool in his houses. I think that we need maybe five, ten, or 20 years for understand if these people, one day in the books of history, they will be considered political prisoners. I, I think that uh, in Franco period, these people was not called political prisoners. Then now it's, uh, it's una trampa, uh, it's a tricky to try to talk in these terms now. I don't know, it's my personal opinion. Eh? It's a so subjective you, opinion. You, you would like to avoid the term political prisoner? No, I mean that what I know is that uh, these nine people that today are in prison, they are not in prison for a, a kind of uh, corruption or for commit violence or something that is a real crime. I think that there's something else more complex. There's a, I think that always is a question of uh, freedom. You know, the system don't want that the things move. And maybe in Catalonia, nowadays we are asking for something new that uh, there's no uh, answer for the central government. They don't know how to lead about it because we always try to make this thing in a peaceful way, not making a, a rebellion. But, uh, and he said that uh, my fellow, my partner, <laughs> sorry, he asked for the independence and, and this is not really true. We, he and me, in our personal life, if we have the possibility to vote, we will vote for yes, for the independence. But the campaign of Omnium Cultural was the word democracy. And we were asking only for a, a tool that is the tool that we use to understand if people want the independence or not, like in Scotland or in Quebec. And then you can vote freely. We, don't, we are not Taliban of the independence and with a gun we say, you vote yes, you can't vote no. 
Why? Why is a referendum a problem in Spain, in Spain today? It's not a referendum a democratic uh, tool for, for know what the people think, what the people want for their future. Why the, the Spanish government has fear of a referendum? This is my personal opinion. Okay. Yes. Last question. Yes. Over there. Can I, can I take you myself? No, 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 no. All right. Um, I just, is, is both a question and a, ref, uh, a reflection, I think. Um, of course, political dialogue and, and discussion is always good and, and is the thing that we should all aim for. But um, you just said that the referendum was a, a peaceful thing and is, is a, a nice thing to do, of course, but are we not forgetting that that referendum, that precise referendum was illegal? And that, that was, uh, I mean, it was, as a, a referendum as such is always nice because we have to vote and we all like to vote, of course, but that referendum in Catalonia in that very precise moment was illegal. Mm -hmm. And it's not that um, people were uh, uh, willing to vote, of course, of course, but if it was illegal, uh, to do something li illegal is also a form of violence. It's, it's to do some, uh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. What was have... the last sentence? Lady? Okay, 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 okay. You what? can have your, your discussion later on the bar, lady, but we're I not going to Lady, I couldn't listen your last sentence. Sorry, could you repeat the last sentence? <laughs> okay, I just have to cut it off. Um, it's no, you can't. <laughs> you can't. This is Catalonia or Holland? <laughs> this is this is Holland, but I have to cut off now the thing because we are running more than half an hour over time. So I all thank you very much for your attention tonight. Uh, answers are always needed, but we will continue the discussion at the bar. For tonight, we are finished. But the forum will continue for three more days. Please take a look at the program. We have lots of interesting programs with international guests. And if you walk out of this room, you can find a newspaper published by El Garaje Editorial about the work of Sera and the political prisoners in English. You can buy the newspaper at the information desk in the hall. I want to thank all the invites who did a, a good presentation tonight. I want to thank you for all the reactions from uh, um, tonight. And uh, please do go on with the discussion on the bar. Uh, thank you very much and have a very good night. Tomorrow there will be a votation on the new cabinet of Spain. Thank, thank you very you. much.